Okay, we're ready to start printing the profiling charts now. So we click on the printer utility. First box that comes up is just to load up the first profiling chart or file dialog box. So we go into our downloads, go to the standard charts that we've downloaded and select the first one. And there we have it. It's all loaded up. Um, it's a very basic utility. It's a little rough around the edges, um, but there's not a lot to it. Uh, you find the options up here. You've got page setup and print. First one is page setup. We need to make sure it's in landscape mode. That's quite important, otherwise you'll only get part of the chart actually printed on the page. Um, so if you're only getting part of the chart printed on the page, not the full chart, then come back, change your orientation over, and make sure it's uh, set to what you the opposite to what you had it before. Should be horizontal, like that. Landscape scale, leave that to 100%. Uh, paper size um, should be based on the paper that you're using on your printer. So in my case, it's a full. Now come down into print. This is where we need to be very careful to make sure that we turn off all color management in the driver. For profiling, uh, you need to have color management turned off in your software uh, and your printer driver. Now, using the Adobe Color Printing Utility, that handles turning off the color management in the software. For the driver, you need to do that yourself. Now, all drivers are a little bit different. Um, you'll find various tab names, uh, page names, um, are different between each driver. So unfortunately we can't sort of give you the full details for every single driver going. Uh, we've tried to do that with our Windows guides to give you an example of um, a number of different drivers um, for the main manufacturers. Um, now we, we're going to do that for the Mac as well. We haven't got all the guides up at the moment. Um, hopefully you've but uh, you know, whilst you're watching this, you, know, you, you might have the latest guides on there now, which have the, the more examples of Mac drivers. But for now, I'm just going to show you uh, the driver for my own personal printer here, which is a 3M1 Epson, the PX710. Um, the, the actual settings should be similar between driver to driver, but you might just need to uh, you know try and figure out which maps to what setting in your printer driver. You know, they'll be named a little bit differently. Things like media handling might be called paper handling or paper type. Um, if you do get stuck, if you do get any issues, then just if you can get send us a screenshot, then please email us a screenshot of your printer driver and we can advise you on what your settings should be. But for now, I'll just go through and explain what needs to be done on this particular driver. The first one is layout. Nothing needs to be changed on there. Color matching. This is the first important setting. Now, for most drivers today, that should all be handled for you as it is shown on screen now. Uh, with color sync enabled, but everything grayed out. Um, if you've got a driver where this isn't uh, um, grayed out, you've got the options. Don't choose color sync. Uh, choose the other option. Uh, this, in this case, Epson color controls. Um, you might have it called vendor control, um, or there might be a, another name for Canons nowadays. Um, but most drivers will have it all grayed out. It means that the the color sync's already figured out that uh, it shouldn't be applying color management at this stage. So it's it's just saying I'm dealing with it. Paper handling. Um, make sure scale to fit paper size is, is not selected. Um, you do not want to expand these charts to fill up the page. If they're too big, particularly if they're A4 charts, then we can't actually scan them in. And we'll have to reject them and ask you to send in a new set. Uh, so that's going to be disabled. Cover page none. Print settings. Now this is also an important stage. Um, as we said before, the media type uh, defines how much ink is put down on the paper. Uh, so you want to choose a media type which uh, gives you the optimum ink density on the paper for the particular paper that you're using. Uh, if you put too darker, no, too denser 
amount of ink onto the paper. The charts will be too dark and it will lead to problems with the profile where you will be getting colour casts and blocking your shadows and that. If you print the charts too lightly then you won't get the full saturated um, performance out of your printer. The profile will be created based on the maximum saturation that you've got using the current setting. Um, so you're basically uh, reducing the performance of your printer by doing so. So you need to strike a balance where the charts will um, are not too dark but they, they're still very saturated. Again this is where density charts will help you find this setting um, if you want to go to that extent of looking to the, um, using the density charts. You basically print out the density charts like a, pro, uh, a profile chart but use different media types for each chart and then you can compare them and see uh, which one looks the best. Which uh, Now it's, it's quite a long process, um, we've got a, some details in our guide on there and what I'll try to do actually, um, I'll try and create a video later on to show you what you need to do for that, what needs to be looked at. Um, but if you read our guide, uh, the, that should give you enough information and some screenshots as to what to look for to find the best setting on here. Now for the Epson, um, if you start off near the top, if you look at the glossy uh, settings, they're the ones that put most ink down. If you go into semi-gloss, uh, that's a little bit less ink, semi-gloss and luster. Um, then you go into your Epson mats and your heavyweight mats. Um, there you've put the least amount of ink down. Um, that's the same for all drivers basically. Um, your glossier will always take more ink than your matte papers. So for this case I'm using uh, some Ilford um, luster paper. So I'm going to use uh, semi-gloss. Now coming down to your modes, um, this is an uh, important thing is to make sure you take everything that's an automatic off to a manual state. You want to keep everything at a defined level um, so the printer driver can't go off and suddenly change things at any time. Um, so I'm linking in with this. It's also a good idea to actually save your settings. If your printer driver allows you to actually save all your settings, once you've set them, and save them because you will be using the same settings every time you use the profile. Uh, so make certainly at least make a note of all the settings you make. But if you can save them into some you know, settings uh, sort of file which you can then sort of recall at any stage, uh, you then don't have to worry about making sure everything's set up correctly. Now we're going to add advanced on here. This gives us our print quality. Again, this is another important one because um, some pay. You would you would expect to maybe if you're looking at getting a profile, you want it to be the highest quality possible. Now, some print drivers actually change their color output when you're changing to a different quality setting. Um, how noticeable that is depends on the printer and the driver. Um, but you might find that if you create a profile for one print quality setting, it doesn't work so well when you actually use it with a different print quality setting. Um, that might not be such a problem if like, you're doing draft printing and then you want to do a, sort of the one final big print as like the highest quality setting. Um, but no, what we probably recommend is actually just get the one profile for the highest quality that you want to use. Then try it at different settings, so if you do use other settings, try it with that and see if it works. If you're getting a change in the colour output and you're not happy with that, then you would need to get a new profile done for the, the other print quality setting. Um, the other thing to note is some pa papers don't accept the highest quality uh, print setting because you, you're basically adding more ink. Um, you're usually using smaller size ink droplets and quite often increasing the density of the ink. It's not like a doubling, you're not, um, whereas you, know, you might see the DPI go doubling up in size. Um, you're not actually doubling the amount of ink being used um, most of the time. You know, it's quite a lot less, um, but it can have an effect with some papers where the paper can't absorb that much ink. So again, that's another thing to maybe check the uh, density charts. Ch you know, check what print quality setting works best for your paper. Um, in this case I'm going to choose photo 
Now some printer drivers might have a print quality like this, a sort of textual description. Other drivers will have a numeric uh, sort of um, description, so with one being the highest quality. Um, and you also might get uh, a DPI setting as well. Um, so any of those, just choose the, the print quality that you really want to use this profile with. I'd recommend turning off high speed, any other options on there as well. Now going to color management, this is the third and again important setting within a printer driver. You need to make sure that the color management is turned off. In my case, there's no other option, it's turned off. Um, if, if you don't have that option, if you've got a number of options, you've got to make sure that that uh, no color adjustment is selected. It might be stated somewhat differently in your driver. It might say no color management. It might be a, a tick box that says ICM, and when you select that, you then get an option, another check, no tick box to say no color management. You might even have another tab. Um, so I've seen drivers where you've got a number of tabs, and one will say matching. And you've got to go in there, and you've got to turn the color management to none. Um, so there's a number of different ways that you know, this can be displayed in your printer driver. Hopefully it's all fairly self-explanatory, but if you have any queries, again, please do get in touch. Um, send us a screenshot if you can and we can advise. Getting through the rest, expansion. Um, we certainly don't want to change the size of the image. It's all greyed out for me anyway. Extension settings. Fixed red eye, uh, that has to be turned off. If you've got any settings on your printer driver that does any kind of image enhancement whatsoever, um, anything that's going to change the colours, anything that does the sharpening, anything like that, uh, please turn it off. Um, you want to make sure that everything is off. Any, any automatic settings, any enhancement settings, it's all turned off. And two side printer settings, not really relevant on this. And that's it. All I need to do then is just click print. Now with the Mac version we can open up a new file. I think with the Windows version you actually have to restart the app. Um, but here we can just load in part 2 again. Again I would go through, check that everything is correct. We've got it on the horizontal landscape mode. Going to print i just go through and check the main pages again are all set correctly. Now, I say some drivers um, we've found don't actually keep the settings from print to print. Um, we notice this because we get the, uh, the profile charts come through in colors. We would expect to be the same color between chart to chart. Uh, they're actually different. And the reason is because normally the media um, type or the printer type uh, paper type, I mean, uh, have been changed uh, just by the printer driver being started up again. Um, so it's a good idea just to double check all of those and then you just print it again. Now at this stage is probably a good idea just to double check the charts, make sure you've got no marks on them, no sort of, no scuff marks, no damage to any of the, the, the colour patches. Make sure you can't see any vertical lines going through any of the patches, where any lines whatsoever, no mottling or anything like that. If they're all solid colour, and it seems like a, a reasonably good match to what you see on screen, um, then that chart's ready. There's a few exceptions to that. Um, third party inks, uh, you will quite often get a very strong colour cast. That's fine. Um, if you do get different to what you see on screen, um, as long as it's not overly dark, it shouldn't be a problem. Um, you've got to remember the you've just turned off all the color management in your printer, so it's not going to match up identically to what you see on the screen. Um, and then you're ready to go. Uh, I would leave the charts to print f uh, to dry for probably 24 hours, um, then put them in a hardbacked envelope and send them off to us. Uh, our contact address is on our website. Um, we really do recommend a hardback envelope because if they get sort of damaged in the post, if they get creased or anything, then we just have to ask for another set. 
Um, when you do send them, please make sure you get them weighed at the post office because we, we do get delays sometimes where not enough postage has been put on. And uh, sometimes you know that, that the post office go very slow. They hold on to them for a week or so before we actually get hold of them. Uh, so a flat A4 cardboard backed envelope is perfect way to send them. Um, we prefer not to have them in uh, tubes. Um, again, I wouldn't even recommend sending them um, sort of by courier or sort of by signatory or anything like that. Um, it's just a necessary expense for yourselves, and we generally you know, cannot guarantee that someone will always be here to actually uh, accept them. So I would just put standard air sort of post first class postage on them, uh, get that weighed at the post office, and send them off to us. Once we receive the charts, we'll process them. It normally takes one to three working days. Uh, we'll find out if there's any issues with the charts, we'll uh, get in touch with you. And once we've created the profile and we've tested it, we'll then email that back to you. Okay, uh, I think that just about covers how you go about doing that, uh, creating the profile and charts using the Adobe Color Printing utility. Um, I hope that's been informative for you, and if you have any questions whatsoever, then please get in touch. Our email address is on our contact page. Thank you for watching.